Ahead of 2023 elections, Lagos State PDP unites to dislodge ruling party APC. And we discuss the executive order number 10, the implications of the Supreme Court's judgment on states. Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna As we count down to the 2023 governorship elections in Lagos State, there is renewed optimism in the camp of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, as to the possibility of breaking the 23-year-old grip of the ruling All Progressive Party, All Progressive Congress, I beg your pardon, APC. Now, a chieftain of the People's Democratic Party, Prince Usman Shodikbe Dosomu, had said the elders of the Lagos State chapter of the party are now reconciled and are working in lockstep to ensure PDP wins the state and forms the next government come 2023. Well, joining us to discuss this is the aspiring Lagos State Publicity Secretary in the People's Democratic Party, Dimola Olariwaju. Thank you so much, Mr. Olariwaju, for joining us. Thank you, Marianne. It's my pleasure to be with you. Great. Um, let's start with, um, you know, the, the fact that there's been a 23 year-long grip of the APC. Um, what's that, what's, what's caused that certainty within the PDP now, uh, you know, to say, well, we're certain that we're going to break that 23-year-old grip uh, on Lagos State and, of course, take over. What's the level of preparedness? Um, what makes you think that you're strong and ready to change the course of things? Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I think the confidence stems from the fact that we think that the people are ready to break the yoke of the APC and the ruling cabal in Lagos State. Um, every polit no political party has any magic formula of winning elections by its own self. It always depends on the resolve of the people um, in that particular society. And um, a lot of signs, you know, in the past few years indicate to us that um, people in Lagos are quite ready to throw off the, um, the chains and the shackles of the ruling cabal um, in Lagos State. And so that's where our confidence stems from. Uh, the motto of our party is power to the people, and we believe that the people of Lagos State are ready to take power um, using, you know, the People's Democratic Party as the vehicle um, for that process. And so that's where our confidence stems from. In terms of preparedness as a political party, um, Prince Uchman Shodipe, you know, alluded to that by um, what he was alluding to, rather, is the fact that um, the process heading into the Congress um, at the state level for the People's Democratic Party, it's, um, it's coming to, to a conclusion. Um, and what is going on is the elders of the party from various um, different tendencies, um, various um, um, beliefs, they are all united in saying that, look, we want to have an executive that will lead a state working committee that will lead the party rightly and pre prepare and position the party for the 2023 election. So it's a two-pronged um, confidence. Number one is the fact that we are confident um, from all the signs that we've seen so far that negotiations are ready to, um, to throw away the shackles of the APC in Lagos State. And number two is the fact that the People's Democratic Party in Lagos State is showing serious signs of unity heading into the con state Congress, um, which, which, you know, didn't used to happen before. So, yes, so those are the two reasons why we are very confident, Mary. Let's look at the Congress that you're talking about, because a lot of people are looking at that Congress. In fact, many people will be looking at the outcome of that Congress to determine how ready you are, how serious the PDP is about, you know, um, turning the tide. Um, but we also see that there are lots of, I mean, every political party does have big wigs and the ones who uh, somewhat uh, are strong men within the party. Um, what should people expect um, as the outcome of the Congress um, come um, next month, I think it's next month. Um, what should we be looking for, forward to? Well, um, the Congress was just moved to, till next week, Wednesday, to next allow week. more time for, um, for uh, thorough you know, discussions, consultations, so that we can have a process that everyone buys into. Um, you know, 
what we what we expect or what we believe people should look forward to is that Philippine in Lagos will come up with a set of people who at the helm of its affairs, people who are not just experienced in um, in political party management, but people who understand um, the aspiration of Lagosians, people who understand that Lagosians are quite ready um, to obtain the government, uh, to, to, you know, um, vote out the government, but that, you know, that must be done through the political process, which is what PDP is trying to get itself uh, prepared for. Um, PDP in Lagos over time has always tried, you know, to dislodge the APC, um, you know, as various forms which it has, uh, various names which it has taken on. Um, but we've not been quite successful because we've never had a match of those two factors I mentioned earlier on. People being ready to take over government and then a political vehicle that is um, ready to harness the desires of those people. So um, we believe that, you know, the Congress is going to see um, people who, are, who understand the political party and people who understand exactly what it is that Lagosians want to see in government. You know, we have ideas that coincide or that um, 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 match exactly the aspirations of the people of Lagos State. And so from next week, um, from next week Wednesday after the Congress, I am very confident that um, the leadership that will emerge of the People's Democratic Party in Lagos State is going to be a leadership that the people of Lagos State can identify with. And especially young people in Lagos State because, you know, um, some of us believe that those people are young people in Lagos State are pivotal to any political process. And um, my aspiration, someone like me, you know, coming out as state political secretary is because um, I want to engage more with the public, especially with young people across all social media, so that we can jointly um, harness those two forces I mentioned, the people on one hand and then the party. And that is how we'll be able to deliver um, what, I, what, I, what I alluded to earlier on, which is the power to the people. I'm going to come to the issue of your aspirations later, but Let's talk about playing opposition. How well has, do you think, the PDP as a party in Lagos State has played opposition politics? Um, some would say that your opposition is almost non-existent. Some others will say, well, you have tried. But you, as an insider, how well do you think that you've been able to speak up on the things that you think are not going right in Lagos, that you uh, are saying you want to... Um, you know, put straight. Uh, have you? Do you think that you can score yourself um, at least fifty or a hundred percent in terms of playing opposition politics in Lagos? Well, um, <clears throat> for me, I'm not. I'm not, um, and I smile because this is something that you know has um, it causes a bit of ruckus on social media. But it's a position that I've consistently maintained that um, I, I am not particularly a fan of opposition politics, especially in the presidential system. Um, in the presidential system, you know, you have, um, you have a government, but then you also have various governments at various levels. Um, so we can already see that the PDP is opposition in Lagos State. But then, you, can, you know, you have a PDP government as close by as your state here, you have a PDP government as close by as uh, River State, and these are governments that, you know, are performing. So for me, I see it more like the People's Democratic Party in Lagos State needs to highlight the flaws of the All Progressive Congress. Then again, we must also show the people of Lagos what they would benefit by being part of the PDP family, the kind of governance that they will see. In other words, when you look at a state like Oyo State and you look at the transformation that is going on there on the leadership of government, you should be able to use that as a selling point in Lagos State and say, look, if you also want this kind of development in Lagos State, if you also want to see this kind of innovation, if you also want to see this kind of cutting-edge um, ideas, then you should um, be a part of the People's Democratic Party. So, um, so it's, it's, it's a it's a double thing again. Um, I, I want to push you. I want to push you. I want to push you on that statement that you are not necessarily open to opposition politics under a um, federal system of government. But, I mean, we say that we're operating some form of democracy, whether nascent or not. And so you're telling me that you don't necessarily think that opposition politics is necessary. Where, where is the place of creating some great. form of checks and balances? Because you see, the truth is, it's very difficult for governments in Nigeria to check and balance themselves. Shouldn't that be the job of the opposition? The constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria... Um, 
and most constitutions in the world generally place the burden of checks and balances on one, the legislature, on the media, on civil society. The duty of political parties is to win elections. Now, when political parties consider that playing the role of opposition is um, advantageous to their goal of winning elections, then they play it. You see, what happened in Nigeria is that in the First Republic, we practice a parliamentary system of government. In a parliamentary system of government, such as being practiced in Britain, you have the government, you have the government as actually someone called the leader of government business, and then you have the opposition political party, and you have someone called the leader of opposition, and um, the leader of opposition, which in the First Republic in Nigeria, that position of opposition was occupied by Chief of Bafemi Awolowo. But in the Second Republic, we moved to the presidential system, away from the, pre from the parliamentary system. In the presidential system, such as being practiced in America, you don't have the Democrats referring to themselves as opposition to the Republicans. You know, what happened in Nigeria was that the All Progressive Congress, from 2011 particularly, decided that they were going to unleash such vile politics um, within the Nigerian polity, and they had to hide it under the tag of opposition. And so they have come to define what Nigerians expect from an opposition, which is that, you know, you call people names, you make outlandish statements, and even when the government... But, but again, calling out, calling out an ill or a misstep in a government that is in power, whether you be civil society or a political party that's not necessarily in government, is that supposedly vile? Should it be vile? Are there not better ways to go it about should. it? And should we totally yeah, shoot down the idea because you think that it is not constitutional? For political parties. No, I'm, 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 I'm referring specifically to the idea of what people expect from an opposition party. The name calling, you know, the, the bitterness, the bile, you know, all that goes on with it. Um, some of us are not attuned to play that kind of politics. We will, in, we will intelligently um, deconstruct the governance in Lagos State. We will intelligently show um, how the APC has systematically since 1999 24 years by 2023, we will show how they have put Lagos State on a downward trajectory by presenting gubernatorial candidates who do not understand the spirit of Lagos, which is business, by presenting people who have never um, 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 uh, um, led any business successfully, and then you want them to be governors of a state like Lagos State. That is why Lagos State has been on the decline. So we will show these things, but we will not do it without bile. Um, if that's what you want as an opposition, then you know. I believe that from next week, Wednesday, Nigerians will see that kind of thing. But we will not be doing the kind of thing that APC does. We will show it in a way that people will see glaringly, and even those who are in APC themselves will be convinced that the alternative party, PDP, is better at the helm of affairs in Lagos State and even at the federal level. So for me, it is very clear. We will highlight the flaws of the government. We will continue to talk about them. Um, just last month in January, we, we, many cities of the political party of PDP in Lagos State pointed out, you know, the increments of 400 billion naira in the budget by the Lagos State government. But again, it is something that cannot be done alone by the political party. The political party can speak, but we need partners in the media, we need partners in the civil society, we need ordinary Lagosians themselves also to see these issues and to, and to speak about these, these um, issues with us. I mean, PDP was trying, I remember... Um, 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 Dr. Ali Sumo, one of the frontline PDP members, was releasing statements about it. Our leader chief, Bodhi George, also spoke about it. Seven of our party chiefs spoke about it, you know, trying to make an issue out of it. But if negotiations themselves must also buy into that agenda and um, realize that what we are doing is not necessarily playing opposition for the sake of it. What we are doing is highlighting the flaws of the, the ruling party in Lagos State for the benefit of all Lagosians. That's what, okay. that's what we will be doing. Okay. Let's talk about the last um, local government elections that took place here in Lagos State. The PDP was managed to get a, 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 you know, a handful of seats uh, here and there. How do you intend to win all of Lagos in 2023 if you're not even able to win at the local level, even for councillorship positions? Uh, what does this say about this stretch and the structure of the PDP or how relatable the PDP as a party is to people at the lowest level? And I always, re re um, re you know, talk about those people or refer to them as those who need government the most. I mean, yes, the state governor is the state governor, but then those at our local government levels are the people who need the government the most. Well, um, I mean, elections... Local government elections are overseen. 
by LASIEC, which is basically an agency of the state. And um, most times we know how those things go. Um, how did they we've go? Had situations before. We have, we've had situations before in 2011, you know, when the People's Democratic Party won a seat at Ethiopia. It was announced by the EO on the field, and by the time they got to the center, they had changed it and deprived the PDP candidate of his victory. The result was openly announced, you know. So, because the agency is essentially controlled by the state government, and so who controls the state government controls that election. So, um, I think, you know, that might not be a fair measurement of the preparedness of the People's Democratic Party. Um, because, you know, what we are hoping to effect is a change that will happen at the state level um, in an election that will be monitored by the Independent National Electoral Commission, which we hope this time around will be absolutely impartial and will, you know, deliver an election that meets with the aspiration of the people. But then again, you know, like I, like I, I want to emphasize and reiterate again, it's not just about the People's Democratic Party. There are many political parties um, registered with INEC to contest elections. And those parties are all there. But the people themselves, I strongly believe, and we as a political party, we believe that the people of Lagos are ready to effect that change in 2023. And we are confident that we will see record turnout even higher than the 2015 election. Because you can see the signs um, there. You see a younger generation, you know, clamoring for things. You see, and this was expressed through the NSAS movement, young people are eager, you know, to see better governance being delivered to them. And so, you know, um, what we will try to do is to harness those forces um, from the young people and then provide a political vehicle that will be able to deliver in line with the aspirations of okay. those people. So it's not just uh, about the People's Democratic Party. It is about the People's Democratic Party positioning itself as the political vehicle that will deliver um, okay. in line with the aspiration of the people of Lagos State. And we are confident that in 2023, that will happen. All right. Uh, let's talk about something that I noticed. Early this month, um, your party petitioned the Inspector General of Police and the Governor of Lagos State, uh, Babajiri Tsongolu, uh, over the voter registration suppression in Etiosa um, East. Now, you talked about harassment, intimidation, uh, vulnerable citizens. Your party um, alleges that thugs um, by the LCDA chairman um, were responsible for this. How did you arrive at this conclusion? Well, I mean, those who live in that locality must have studied the situation and observed. I mean, there are things that um, you see with your own eyes. Um, I wasn't there personally, and I wasn't the one who issued that statement. But the people who witnessed it, you know, um, made us understand the situation that is going, is going on there. And hence that petition. They have been willing, you know, to, to put that on record, you know, basically. I mean, it's one thing to come on air and make allegations. It's another thing to actually write a petition to the Inspector General of Police and then to the Lagos State Governor also. Um, so, I mean, what, what, what we should do now or what should happen now is that pressure should be put on the IG and the Lagos State Governor to respond to the issues with in that petition. It was raised formally, was, uh, you know, names were put um, out there, you know, invite the person for a discussion. You know, that is where it should start from. And, and again, I'm personally not surprised, and I don't think you should be surprised too, Mary, and anyone who followed the trend in the last election in 2019, you know, where during the presidential election in Lagos State, you had a situation where thugs were attacking people of a certain ethnicity because they felt um, those people were going to vote for the People's Democratic Party. It happened around the Quarter area, it happened in Suleri area also. And we saw those things happen. So it is synonymous with what the APC does. Unleashing thugs against people is synonymous with what the APC does. Look, since but, but, but the APC had a response. I'd like to read it out to you. I'd like to quote them directly. In a reaction from the APC, they said, and I quote, it is a localized issue and it has not been brought to our notice or the notice of the state secretariat. But when it is done, they will deal with it. So the APC is saying... No such thing has been reported, so they do not know anything I mean, about it. I mean, you just read, you just, you just mentioned that a petition was duly submitted, you know, and um, put out in the media space, and also put with the IG when names were mentioned specifically, and then the APC says it is not aware. You know, I mean, that's only acting in line with what is becoming the ideology of their political party, where they are not aware of these things and they want to live in bliss and in ignorance. But you see, since 1999. 
votes in Lagos State have continually been on the decline. The last time we had high votes in Lagos State was in 2011, was in 2011, yeah, 2011 and 2015, where it came to a peak. In 2019, it went on the decline. We discovered that if you look at those voting results, the truth is the APC does not want the voter base to expand. It doesn't want more people voting in Lagos. How do you mean? The more people vote. And, I mean, the, the APC has a consistent, um, they have, they've always had a consistent range of figures that they score in elections, always 800,000 and 900,000. The only time it went higher was the time Raji Fashola was running for a second term. That was when it went to above one million. Now, if you understand how the APC itself operates, um, young people are not captured adequately in Lagos State. If you look at Lagos State, you have a vibrant young population, but is that, is that the fault the of the APC or the fault of the young people not willingly yes, wanting I mean, to be captured? Because it's one thing to say, blame a political party, but how many young people really show up at the polls when, on election I mean, day? We, we, had, we, had, we had a president in this country at some point in 2011. We had a president who deliberately went after the young folks. You know, who many young people voted for the first time in 2011 because of the then president who was on the PDP platform. Um, those young people came into politics and they were so disgruntled with the system that they ended up removing that person. Okay? So, what you usually have is this. Politicians generally like to keep their voter base, they like to keep it simple, they like to keep it safe. You know, they don't want too many people coming into the political process. But, you know, some of us are here to break that. We are here to, to break down those doors and say, basically, let more people come into the vote. And the consistent trajectory, and it doesn't happen anywhere else in the, develop, in the developed world, the constant trajectory is that more and more people turn out to vote year after year. But what happens in Lagos it is it's actually declining. And that's, that's a commentary on the ruling. Is that really just a Lagos. Lagos state problem or a nationwide problem? I mean, it's both. In 2011, you had, you had more people coming out, more people than in 2007. In 2015, you had more people coming out. In 2019, there was a decline because people felt that their votes would not count where people come out to vote and a ruling party decides to use the powers of the state to go after people, you know, send thugs after voters, disrupt the voting process, you are discouraging people from voting. Mm -hmm. So you see, it's, 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 a, it's, it's more of a systemic thing. That voter suppression issue, it's more of a systemic thing. And that's why PDP was raising the alarm, you know, as far as it feels I was concerned. That look, there is a deliberate voter suppression system. And okay. again, for those of us who care about Lagos State, we see it as a dangerous trend because in the last presidential election, maybe, Borno State had just about 50,000 voters less than Lagos State. Lagos State used to be regular, one of the top three um, voting vote, um, uh, voter turnout states all across the country. Hmm. In the last 2019 election, Borno State, where there was a bomb blast, you know, turned out just about 50,000 votes less than Lagos. This is a dangerous trend. But it shows okay. you that what is going on in Lagos State is not, um, is not fair to the interest of Lagosians. It's not fair to okay. the interest of the people of Lagos. And it is, um, it is inimical to the, to, the, to, the, to the purposes of democracy. So right. for me, this voter suppression issue is something that uh, really needs to be talked about. And we will continue to talk about it going forward. All right. Lastly, before I, I wrap up, because we're almost out of time. Lagos for Lagos, um, we hear, um, has moved from the APC into the PDP. In fact, um, the um, leader of that group, um, Olajide Adediron, had said that he joining the party uh, was to resurrect the PDP to win elections. Does this pretend that um, Lagos for Lagos is what the PDP has been missing in time past, or this is what the PDP needs to win the elections come 2023? Now, he's also aspiring to be Lagos, uh, a Lagos state governorship uh, aspirant or candidate for the PDP. Uh, will this not ruffle the feathers of those who have already been in the party that may also be nursing the same kinds of ambition? Well, I mean, any politician who's not ready for conflict or who's not ready for um, a clash of aspirations is not ready for politics. In politics, you have to always be ready to test your aspiration in the field. And I think, you know, all our politicians in the People's Democratic Party, especially those who are contesting um, for governor, are ready to meet with anyone in the field. Having said that, I think, you know, Dr. Julia Lidion's uh, defection from the APC to the PDP is a sign of a third factor. You know, I mentioned three, fa I mentioned two factors earlier on, um, but now you've stumbled on what I can call the third one. 
Um, the first was the people, the second was the party, and then the third is the ruling party itself. Dr. Gideon Adidio's um, movement from the APC to the PDP is a sign of growing discontent within the all-progressive Congress. He's just the only one who is young and vibrant enough, who is foresighted enough to, you know, jump chic from the APC, seeing what the APC has become in Lagos. He's the one who's young and vibrant enough to defect to the People's Democratic Party. And we commend him. I mean, welcome him most all at early. He has also said very clearly, and that's talking about Jandor himself, Dr. Abdulaziz Olaji uh, you know. He has also said clearly that he's in this party to stay. He's going to fight for the ticket. We've also explained, um, we've explained that, you know, People's Democratic Party is not a party of Godfathers. It's not a party where, you know, one person will sit in his house and determine who becomes the gubernatorial candidate. You are going to go to the field, delegates will cast their vote, and eventually you would, if you met the flag bearer, then so be it. And he has said he's ready to submit himself, you know, to the democratic process within the People's Democratic Party. So he is welcome. But for me, it is a sign that the third factor, you know, in winning elections is um, falling into place. The okay. first is that the people are ready. The second is that the party is ready. And the third is that the ruling cabal um, is finally breaking down from the inside. So for us, it's a, it's a positive sign. Well, I want to say thank you. Um, Demola Olariwadu is the, uh, he's aspiring to be the Lagos State Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you very much, Miriam. The pleasure is mine. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, we'll look at the issue of the executive order number 10 and the Supreme Court's decision to nullify President Buhari's executive order. Stay with us.